Greetings, good people, wherever you are. I thank God for this opportunity that our Abba Father has given me to share the word of God with you. In fact, uh, I want to share uh, about uh, the wedding of the Lamb. The wedding of the Lamb. And that one is Matthew chapter number 22. Uh, it says in verse 1, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and um, said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. Remember that um, Jesus used parables when uh, when he was giving his sermons in the three and a half years he uh, he studied. I mean, he gave um, he walked in this earth uh, in his ministry. So we want to see most of the teachings he gave using parables, and. Um, this one day I can remember uh, that uh, the disciples came to him to ask him why he's using parables. And this is what he told them in Mark chapter number 4 and I want to read uh, verses 10. But when he, uh, he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. So those who were around him and the twelve disciples uh, asked him about the parable. And the number Verse number 11, and he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So, uh, I can say that uh, the, uh, the sermon that Jesus was giving in his three and a half ministry, uh, three and a half years ministry, was a mystery. The mystery of the coming kingdom of God. So he was giving this parable to denote that there is a kingdom of God. In each and every parable he was giving, he was trying to say that the parable is likened unto the kingdom of God. So he mentioned the kingdom of God in every parable. Whether he was mentioning the ten miners, he was mentioning the kingdom of God. So he said that um, to you it has been granted to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and uh, their sins be forgiven them. So we find that many people are reading the Bible. They are going for the theology. They study a lot of the Bible. But they are still outside. Because they can see, but they, don't, they do not um, understand. We are told that they may hear and they don't understand. And they may see and not perceive. So that verse 13 says, and he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? So these parables were meant to be understood by those inside God's church. They were meant to be understood by me and you. And there is no speciality in understanding the mystery of the coming kingdom of God through the parables that Jesus Christ gave. There is no perfection. There is nobody who is perfect or worthy to understand. But those who obey, those who believe in the word of God, those who are seeking God, those who are asking God to give uh, them wisdom and understanding. Because we are told in the, uh, in the book of um, James, that James chapter 1 verse 5, that we should ask for wisdom. God gives wisdom if you want it. So it can no longer be a mystery to you because God wants us to know it when you are inside, when you are in Jesus Christ. And this is what uh, we found in Matthew chapter number 22. Uh, in Matthew chapter number 22, verses uh, 1, 
uh, the Bible says, and Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. Remember that uh, Matthew, who wrote this uh, uh, book, referred to this kingdom as the kingdom of heaven because it is set up in heaven. It is something that will come from heaven. That's why we say, uh, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. So when you go to verses uh, 3, it says, and um, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and he sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. So even before we go there, we find that um, there is a king who is arranging a marriage for his son. This king, we want to see, who is this king and who is this son? When we go to the uh, Old Testament books, we find that uh, there is um, the book of Daniel. We want to see something in the book of Daniel, uh, chapter number 12. The book of Daniel, chapter number 7. And we want to read verses 13 and 14. It says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. So we find that there is, um, uh, Daniel was watching in the night visions and uh, saw one like the Son of Man, and this is, Jesus, this is Jesus Christ. He came with the cloud of, uh, of heaven, and he came to the Ancient of Days, and this is God himself. Ancient of days is God himself. While the son of man is Jesus Christ. And we find that Jesus Christ was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. That all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. Then we are told that his dominion is an everlasting dominion. Which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. As we find here also in uh, the book of Daniel, chapter number, the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter number uh, 9. And we are going to read from verses 6. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. What I like in this verse, if I read verse 6, is that God is doing everything for us. What he has arranged, the kingdom he has arranged for us. That means that God really loves us. And that's why for unto us a child is born. And to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from the time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So we see here that uh, uh, God has granted the kingdom and is preparing a wedding for his son. Here we, are find that, we find that uh, God is the king 
and his son, Jesus Christ, who is going to be the ruler, is going to be the heir of all things, is going to be the king of kings, is going to be the lord of lords, and he is the lord of lords. He is the wonderful counselor. He is the mighty father. That is what the Bible is telling us here. That uh, when uh, the book of the New Testament, that's Matthew chapter number 22 and verses 1, is telling us that, uh, in fact, verses 2, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who are invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. We have found out that in Daniel chapter number 7 verses 13 and 14 that the dominion, the power is given to this uh, son, Jesus Christ. He has authority. That is why we are told in uh, the book of Isaiah chapter number 9 verses 6 that the government will be upon his shoulder. Now, this is what is happening. Uh, that uh, Jesus Christ has been given an uh, authority. And when we read uh, in the book of Matthew chapter number 28 verses um, 18, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So that's why uh, he sent his servants to go and invite people to the wedding. Now, how, um, how did he send his servants and who are the servants? The servants of God are those who are giving you or they are the spokesmen of God. And what they are doing is this. In Matthew chapter number 28 verses 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. We are instructed as servants of God to go therefore. And make disciples of all nations. That's what I'm doing now. That's what I'm rightly doing. So that people from all corners of the earth. Those who can understand this language. English. Now can... Um, uh, get to know this truth. This They can get to be invited into this wedding supper of the Lamb. And uh, he's saying, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So the disciple, uh, I mean, disciples were sent, and we are also sent, so that we can go into all the world. Be it Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa, Egypt, United States of America, Australia. So those who are going to heed to this invitation they will enjoy this wedding. The Bible says, teaching them, that's what the servants are doing, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's an assurance to the servants that they should not, uh, uh, they should not, get tired of going outside and teaching all things that Jesus Christ had commanded them. So here we are in Matthew chapter number 22 and then verses 3. It says, And sent out his servants to call the, the, uh, those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. So the surprising part of this and the saddening part of it is that uh, some people were not willing to come. Imagine the king has invited you to the wedding of his son. Just like in Kenya here we have president. And our president is William 
Samoy chip 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 chir chir Arab Ruto. And uh, William Ruto has invited you to a wedding uh, that he has arranged for his son. And uh, to his surprise, you are not willing to go. Imagine. And when you are invited to such wedding party of such dignitaries, people like the president of Kenya, then you are given a very special invitation card. That is an invitation given to VVIP. That is very, very important person. So when you are invited to the wedding of uh, the son of the king, that is the prince, they know very well that you are very, very important person to the king. But now, with an amazement, some people refused. They rejected the invitation. And this is what we are told here. That because this king loved his people and he wanted the wedding to take place, I mean to be uh, celebrated by many people, he again did this in verse 4. Again he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fattened, fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. Which means when you are going there, there is nothing you are going to contribute. There is nothing you are going to contribute. Only that when you are invited, when God calls you and you have heard this good news, what are you supposed to do? In Romans chapter 12 and verses 1, the Bible say, says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That is what you are required to do. That you are supposed to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that your mind can be the mind of Christ as is it, it is written in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. That let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So we should not be conformed to this world. We are called to the wedding. What we are supposed to do. The only part we are playing is to renew our minds. To have the mind of Christ. To believe. To repent. Are you seeing? Because the Bible is saying. For I say. Through the grace given to me. To everyone who is among you. Not to think of himself more highly. Than he ought to think. But to think soberly. As God has dealt to each one. A measure of faith. God wants you not to think so high. Believe in him. Trust him. He has called you. And then we are seeing here in Matthew chapter number 22 and verses 5. Uh, we're starting from verse 4. Again he sent out other servants. Tell those who are invited. See I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready come to the wedding so here brothers and sisters we are invited there's nothing we are going to contribute but we have to change our mind 
we have to renew our mind. We have to be transformed. We have to believe Christ. We have to believe God. So these people who are invited, everything was ready. Uh, but in verse 5 it says, but, you know, when I hear the word but, that one changes the course of action. It changes the line of thought. Yes. But they made light to it and went their ways. One to his own farm, another to his business. So that's why we are told not in, 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 in uh, the book of Romans chapter number 12 to renew our mind, to be transformed. Let us not conform to this world. Because the things of this world passes. So when you are invited, take it serious. The Bible is telling us that we should take this invitation serious. Because anything may happen. In fact, God has invited you to this wedding and it says in 1 John chapter 2 verses 5, Do not love the world. You see, those who are invited... Some of them did not take it serious. Some went to their business, some went to their farm, some went to the other things, some even tried, in fact, killed the servants who were sent. As we continue reading, we'll see. But the Bible is telling us in First John chapter 2, verses 5, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And verse 16 of John, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse uh, 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So, brethren, in verse 17, we told, And the world is passing away, and the last of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So when you do the will of God, you abide forever. These things we are seeing, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all the good things, the money, people really like money, they like uh, fame, they like titles, they like all these things here. All these things passes away. But the word of God lasts forever. You see there, in Matthew chapter number 22, in verses 5, the Bible says, but they made light of it. Many people have heard the gospel, good news. Many people have heard the truth. Because we are told in John chapter 8 verse 32 that the truth will set us free. But people are still enslaved with the things of this world. They are still enslaved with uh, this System, this world system, I do call it the world system of organized chaos. They want to go the way the world is going. So that's what's happening now. That the Bible is saying they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his own business, and the rest. Seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. So that's what's happening even now. People don't like the truth. They can even kill with the words. They can discourage other people. I can remember where we are living in, in um, uh, the southern part of Kenya. We have had a lot of people killing those who want to hear the truth with the word of the mouth. They will tell them every nasty thing about us just to make them not to understand this truth, not to seek for the truth that God has given us. So here we find that uh, God has called us. And when he has called us and given us an invitation to go and attend the wedding supper of the Lamb. That is a very, very important 
invitation that you should not ignore as a true Christian. You should take it serious. You should pray about it. You should thank God every day. You should praise God for that. Because there is nothing totally good in you that has made you to be called. God has called you out of love. Because God himself is love. You are not just worthy to be called. But God is calling you because of love. God is calling you because of his faithfulness. In fact, God loves his people. He calls wretched people like us. Very uh, people who are not even worthy to be called. Like me and you. And we see here that some people, having been invited, they seized the servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. That's the worst part of it. As you can remember how disciples were killed, only John died a natural death in the uh, isol of Patmo. In fact, the rest of them were killed. God himself wanted everybody to hear this truth. That is why he told them that the dinner, the dinner is ready, ready. So they should go and invite people from different places. In fact, if you read verse 8, it says, Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready. But those who are invited were not worthy. Yeah. In fact, uh, those who are invited did not want, they rejected the invitation. And then in verse 9, therefore go into the highways and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So anybody, uh, this one is giving me a clear picture. Uh, when I started knowing, knowing the truth back uh, some um, 11 years ago, and I really, I was uh, a debat in the truth, and uh, I was really enjoying the truth, and uh, I wanted to read, and, and in fact convince those people who are my friends, I could go to my friends and maybe my, uh, my former church members and maybe tell them this truth, Little did I, did I know that these people were not invited. They were not worthy. And in fact, some of my uh, the people whom I saw as elites, those who were intelligentsia class, some of them were well learned. Uh, they, they, I thought some had theology. Some were pastors. My friends who were pastors and bishops and called them. So I thought this truth will fit them. I had a zeal. To go to them and tell them about the truth, about the kingdom of God, about the Sabbaths. I mean God's master plan for the salvation of humankind. I wanted to tell them the state of death. Because people believe that those who have died are in heaven. They go to heaven directly. That's not what the Bible is trying, trying to tell us. Having known this truth, so I was having the zeal. I had the zeal to tell people. Little did I know that these people are not invited. Even though what I was doing was trying to do what Matthew chapter number 28 verse 19 was saying. That go therefore into all the world. In fact, I was trying that with a lot of zeal. But some would spitefully abuse what I was telling them. Then I started learning from that, that not all people are invited. Not all people will accept the invitation. Not all people will like the truth. In fact, few people like the truth. Most people like fables, devised teachings. They want teachings that are itching, to, that makes their ears to itch. They want a lullaby song of prosperity and how to get things of this world. You see? So, 
you are told to therefore go if you are a servant therefore go into the highways and as many as you find regardless of the tribe regardless of their uh, status quo regardless of their background regardless of race regardless of their uh, i mean the 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 level of education you are told now to go to the highway in the highways you'll find every tom dick and harry there you'll find people of different social class and as many as you find invite to the wedding so invite them to the wedding and those people because the word of god is telling us in romans chapter number 10 and i want to read it in romans chapter number 10 and verse 17 and i would start it from uh from verse 14 i think i would start it from verse 14 that says uh, from verse 13 for whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and verse 15 and that's why now jesus is telling his disciples to go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the name of the son and the holy spirit then verse 14 how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they shall they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher those are questions at verse 15 and how shall they preach unless they are sent so you must be sent i know those who are sending themselves but here the word of god is telling us that you must be sent by christ himself and um, the bible is saying us it, it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things and verse 16 but they have not all obeyed the gospel that's why in verse 6 we have found that um, uh in Matthew chapter number 22 there are those people who did not heed to the call they did not heed to the invitation they rejected the invitation so and the bible is now saying but they have not all obeyed the gospel for isaiah says lord who has believed our report now we are doing our part because we are told to preach unto all the world to preach unto all the creature everybody regardless it is not your duty to call but it is your duty to preach because god himself calls we preach as witnesses as we have been given the holy spirit here and um, I love to read uh, Acts chapter number 1 verse 8 that says but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth so here brothers and sisters we are just witnesses we are witnessing witnessing does not mean you tell people come to the church this is the true church this is where you are going to receive the salvation no present the truth let god call somebody we are not on the is we are not on a spree of 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 bringing many many people to the church so that we have hundreds and hundreds of the of people in the church and i think people nowadays most ministers think that if many people are in their church then um, god has called them that is when they are working 
But here we are told that um, we are witnesses. We are witnessing. And here we find that the Bible tells us in the book of Romans where we were. In verses uh, 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For I say, for Isaiah says, Lord who has believed our report. So whether they believe this report, you are sent. And somebody who is sent delivers the message the way it is. Whether this person will uh, heed to the message or not, he has done his part. Whether only one person is going to watch this or two people. Whether only five people are um, listening to this. I've done my part as Ondego. I've done it. And it says in verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this word of God, which is the Bible, which is in the Bible here, that is what we should hear. Faith comes through hearing. When there is no preacher, nobody, you will not hear. How can they hear if there is no preacher? Yes. And how can you go when you are not sent? And verse 18 says, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the word, world. So here, we find that God is calling to people. And the book of John says, he is the one. John chapter 6 verse 44. It's very clear. That no one come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. So here is God who is calling. And is taking people to Jesus Christ, the Savior. The Redeemer. The resurrector is the one who is going to resurrect us. You see? Because he's saying that he will raise us in the last day. And when we come back to uh, Matthew chapter number 22. Because we have found that the invitation is going on. Until now. Until the last person who is going to be invited. And it says uh, in, verse, uh, in Matthew chapter number 22. And verses uh, 7. Let's uh, start it from verse 6. Let's go back to verse 6. Says, and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his army. So he was very furious. He, uh, destroyed, he destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Remember, God will avenge for those who have shed the blood of his saints. He will avenge. The blood of the saints are crying out and God must avenge for those who are killed because of uh, righteousness. And this is what the Bible is saying. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. But those who are invited were not worthy. The wedding is ready. Are you going to uh, reject the invitation or you are going to accept? For most people, they reject. Because they want to hear the word of God from professors. They want to hear the word of God from the people of the clothes. They want to hear the word of God from well-established organizations. They want to hear the word of God from certain, from people with certain caliber. They want to hear the word of God from people with good titles. They want to hear the word of God from people of some age. Yeah, and you know, when Jesus was preaching... People could not believe that he is the son of God. Number one, he was young, 30 years old. Number two, he was not of any good uh, physique. 
he was not well built he I don't know he was not so much handsome he was not coming from a rich family you see and that's how Jesus Jesus God has sent his people the servants despite their social class social status despite their background despite the nation they are coming from despite anything god is calling his people and is making them to preach the word of god the truth for his glory he uses weak people he uses very very weak and despised people to disseminate the truth the bible is saying in um, matthew chapter number 22 verses um, 11 but when the king came in to see the guests he saw a man there who did not have uh, on a wedding garment remember before we go there that this wedding i can remember uh, the first wedding i attended i attended when i was in i was in primary school my last year in primary school i attended a wedding and what i liked most <laughs> let me uh, amuse you is that i ate that is the first day i ate something called pilau a very nice meal to me up to now i ate cake a cake that day and everybody was very happy there was that matching uh, you see i really liked it the way the flower girls could throw away the flowers um the way the the, the bride and the bridegroom were treated with a lot of respect ululations praises very good songs you see i was very much um glad and that day i i did not want even that day to to end and i was thinking of when will i do this wedding are you seeing and because this is a very special day we should be very happy because we are told that jesus christ is going to marry and is going to marry the church and the bible is telling us in uh, the book of um, uh, revelation let's read the book of revelation chapter number 19 I love reading this verses verse 7 let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready you see that's how we are told to be very glad we are told to rejoice and give god glory give jesus christ glory for the marriage of the lamb as come and the lamb is jesus christ remember when john saw jesus christ in john chapter 1 verse 29 he said that behold the lamb of god so we are told that for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready and verse 8 and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints you see ha <laughs> verse 9 then he said to me right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said to me these are the true sayings of god these are the true sayings of god You see we have to be glad. I think uh, when I remember what uh, the Bible says um I think in the book of um 2 Corinthians 11 verses 2 For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy for I have betrothed you to one husband that i may present you as a chaste virgin to christ so we are the people 
we are the bride and we have to be presented to Messiah, our husband, as a chaste virgin. For he has espoused us. He has espoused us to an husband. That is Yeshua, the Messiah. But here he was also fearing because he said in verse 3, But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve, by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Messiah. So that's why when I read the book of Romans chapter 12 and verses 2, that we should not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of our mind. We should be transformed. We should have the mind of Christ. Because Satan can deceive anybody by his craftiness. The way he did it to Adam and Eve, the way he's doing it to others now, and he has corrupted so many people, so many people's minds. And that's why they are invited, but they do not care. They take light of the invitation, the special invitation. So, we are told to be very glad. When you are called to the Magic Supper of the Lamb, you should be very glad. You should rejoice. The Bible says, and I'm going to read it again. I really like it. Let us be glad. That is Revelation 19.7. And rejoice. And give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Let me tell you that righteousness is a gift that God has given us. This is a gift that God has given us because we were all we all fell short of glory. In fact, if you read the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, verse 23 it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All, including me and you. Number 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Messiah. That is in Yeshua Messiah. At verse 25 of the same Romans 3. Whom God set forth as propitiation by his blood. Through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. So here, the righteousness is given as a gift to us. It's a gift. Righteousness imputed. It is given to us by God's grace. We are called by grace. There's nothing we have done that can guarantee calling. And I think if you read the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2, and we're going to read from verses 8, it says, uh, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. If we could have been called through wax, if we could have not been uh, saved through wax, then we could have boasted because of that. For we are his workmanship, that's verse 10, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see. Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that all that time you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having to, no hope and without God in the world. But now, verse 13, in Christ Jesus you are once, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So you see, 
I want to tell you that the invitation is not done because of what we have done. The invitation is not done. We have not been invited because of what we know. In fact, if we look at ourselves, we know very little. What we know is very little. What we think we know. What others think they know. It's very little. And that's why we should be poor in the spirit. Jesus said it in Matthew chapter number 5. You see, he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That is 5 or 6. For they shall be filled. God wants us to be very thirsty. We should be hungering and thirsting for the truth, for righteousness. Because you cannot say you are full. You cannot say you are, you now know everything. You cannot say you are perfect. No. God has called you. You have been called to go to the wedding, to eat good food, to enjoy the food that is prepared. And, and let me tell you that in the, in the kingdom, God is promising everybody that he will eat. And you know in the wedding, people do eat. Yes. You see? People eat. In fact, in uh, Isaiah chapter number 25, verse 6, it says, And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines and the of the lees. He says, and in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the lees. And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. You see? And he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So this is something that makes us glad. That's why we are told to be glad. For the marriage supper is ready. People are being invited every day. God has opened the door for every person who will heed this call. No special person, no speciality when you are invited. Only that you are invited as because God looks at you as a very, very important person. Just because of his love, not because of what you have done. Because of his mercy, because of his faithfulness, because he stands his ground. He cannot change. His love endures forever. So when you are called, do not... Uh, Take it light the way those, uh, I mean, the way people take it light. Try to pray. Ask God to forgive you. Let His will be done in your life. Do the necessary. Because we are told that we should love Him by keeping His commandments. We should love Him. He has called us. We should love Him. And we should know that God loves those who love his word. And those who are seeking him. So we are here seeing that uh, in Matthew chapter number 20, 
22. Uh, he came to the wedding and found that somebody has not is not having a wedding garment. In uh, Revelation 19, verse 7 and 8, we have found that there is a wedding garment called linen. We have different materials, fa uh, fabric materials. And when I was uh, taught home science, we were told that we have uh, cotton, we have acrylic, we have polyester, we have silk, we have linen, you see. But we were, this, I can't remember one one day when our, the, our madam teacher was telling us that linen is expensive. Linen, it's expensive. It's one of the fabric which is very expensive. But when now I'm seeing it is written in Revelation chapter number 19 verse 7, then I think linen here, see, it, was, uh, it has a meaning. And the meaning is that it is the righteous acts of the saints. So this who did not have the wedding garment did not have the right garment. Which means he did not have fine linen which is the righteous acts of the saints. So he said to him, friend, who did you, how did you come in, in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And verse 13, then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into, uh, into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And verse 14, For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. Many, many, many are called. And let me tell you, uh, in Revelation, not only calling is enough, if you go to the book of Revelation chapter 17 and verses 14, the Bible says, This will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. You know, those who are going to make war with the Lamb, some of them are those people who are invited. Because we have read there and we have found that some of them uh, try to bind, they bind the, the, the servants and kill them. So this will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them. For this Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who are with him are called. That's number one. They are called. So that the first thing is calling. That's why you are told many are called, few are chosen. They are called. Chosen. And faithful. Three. Three things. Just like in Africa here, in Kenya and uh, parts of Africa, uh, our natural... Uh, can I say natural gas, natural cooking system was of three stones. The three stones were put uh, one just like a, a shape of a triangle so that when you put your sufuria, the cooking pan, it is put on those three stones. So here we have calling, we have choosing and faith, being faithful. So when God calls you, you he also choose you and then you become faithful. So those God has called must be faithful. They must be chosen. So calling alone is not enough. And that's why Jesus Christ said, uh, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to grant you the kingdom. So brothers and sisters, let us heed to this call. God has called us. Let us not um, take it lightly, take it seriously, pray about it. Be among the flock. Let this word help you because God wants you to be, to heed it. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Truth Points. There are a lot of teaching there. And we are loading both uh, English sermons and Kiswahili sermons for those who are uh, uh, here in uh, Kenya and parts of the Africa, uh, those who are understanding the language of Kiswahili, and uh, also those who are giving, uh, those who are understanding English, please help support Truth Points by subscribing. Help, sub uh, help support Truth Points 
in any way you can support, even through prayer or your finances, anything. And may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.